In the previous video, we wrote some code so that if the admin of the proxy contracts calls into some functions inside the proxy contract, they'll be able to call it. Otherwise, if the caller is not the admin of the proxy contract, if the caller is a regular user, then we forward all of the calls to the implementation. In this video, we'll write a proxy admin contract, and this contract will be the admin of the proxy contract. The problem that we're having right now is if we scroll to the proxy contract, and let's say that the admin of this proxy contract wants to call the function admin or implementation inside the implementation contract. However, since the function admin and implementation also exists inside the proxy contract that you can see over here, if the admin of the proxy contract wants to call the admin and implementation function inside the implementation contract, the counter B1 contract, they won't be able to call it. So to solve this problem, we'll create another contract called proxy admin, and that contract will be the admin of this proxy contract. If the owner of the proxy admin contract wants to get the admin and implementation inside this proxy contract, they'll call a function inside the proxy admin contract, which will call these functions. Otherwise, all users, including the admin, are not the admin of this contract. So all of their function calls will be forwarded to the implementation contract, the counter B1. So the first thing that we're going to need inside this proxy contract is a function to set the admin of this contract. So I'll type function change admin. It will take in a single input address of the new admin underscore admin. This function will be external. And we'll only show this function if message.sender is the admin of this contract. So I'll put a modifier if admin. And then we'll call the internal function set admin, passing in the admin from the input. Okay, so now that we have a function to set the admin, let's write a proxy admin contract. And once we deploy both the proxy contract and the proxy admin contract, we'll call change admin passing in the address of the proxy admin contract. Okay, so I'll scroll down and then type contract proxy admin. This contract will have an owner. So I'll say address public owner and then inside the constructor, constructor, we'll set the owner to the deployer message.sender. Next, we'll create a only owner modifier a modifier where only the owner of this contract will be able to execute some functions. So modifier only owner, and then we'll require message.sender is equal to the owner. With the error message not authorized, and then if message.sender is owner, we'll go ahead and execute the rest of the function. And then next, we're gonna create two functions where only the owner of this contract is able to call a function to change the admin of the proxy contract and a function to call upgrade to on the proxy contract. So function change proxy admin. This will be external. We'll fill in the inputs later. I just want to declare some functions. This function can only be called by the owner, only owner. And another function will be function upgrade again we'll fill in the inputs and the details later i just want to declare some functions here external and again only owner okay let's now start with change proxy admin this function will take in a single input address of the new admin underscore admin actually it's going to take in two inputs address of the proxy address payable proxy. The reason why we're declaring the proxy as payable is because the proxy contract has a fallback function and a receive function. So we'll need to declare this address as payable. And then we'll call the function change owner on the proxy contract. So I'll type proxy at the address of the proxy dot change admin passing in the input admin. Okay, next, let's write the function for upgrade. When the owner of the proxy admin contract calls upgrade, they'll be able to upgrade the contract inside the proxy contract. So inputs will be address, payable 
address of the proxy, proxy, and then address of the new implementation, address implementation. And then we're going to call the function proxy at the proxy contract, the function upgrade to passing in the address of the implementation, implementation. Okay, next we'll write some read-only functions to get the address of the implementation and the address of the admin. So what I mean by here is if I scroll up and look at the function signature for admin and implementation, it returns the address of the admin and implementation, but these two functions are not read-only function. We have to move the view declaration since we have a if admin modifier which has a potential to call the fallback function. So now these functions are not read-only. However, inside the proxy admin, we can get the address of the admin and implementation as a read-only function. So let's do that. So I'll declare function get proxy admin. You will pass in the address of the proxy address proxy external. This function will be read-only. So view returns address. And the way that we're going to call into a function that is not read-only, if you look at the declaration of admin, it doesn't have any view or peer keyword. So this is not a read-only function. But inside here, we can call the admin and also make it into a read-only function. The way we do this is by using static call. So I'll type proxy dot static call. Static call is like call except that it does not write anything into the blockchain. Just like the call, we'll pass in the data, the function that's encoded as data for the first input. So I'll type abi.encode call. The call to encode is proxy.admin. The function admin takes zero inputs. So we'll pass in an empty parentheses, meaning that there is no input to pass into the function admin. And just like the call, this will return two outputs. The first output is whether the static call is successful or not, boolean, okay. And then the next output is the output that came from calling into the function. So it will be in bytes, bytes, memory, I'll call it rest, short for response. Once you have these two outputs, boolean, okay, and bytes, memory, response, first we'll require that the call was successful, require, okay, otherwise, call failed and then we know that when we call the function admin it returns an address so we'll abi decode the response into address return abi dot decode rest as address okay we're done with the function get proxy admin this will call the proxy.admin, decode the address, and then return the address of the admin. Let's do something similar to get the address of the implementation. So I'll copy this, paste it here, and then rename this function to get proxy implementation. And then the function that we're going to be calling is proxy implementation, and the rest are the same. So I'll hit control S to see if the contract compiles and I see an error here. I am missing a parentheses and I'll do the same over here and let's try compiling contract again. And the contract compiles. So let's now deploy the proxy contract, proxy admin and counter B1 and counter B2. I'll click on the deployment tab and then we'll deploy counter B1, counter B2 proxy and proxy admin scroll down and we have four contracts first inside the proxy contract let's set the address of the implementation so i'll copy the address of counter b1 and then paste it here i'll also open the transaction logs and the transaction to upgrade to counter b1 was successful so let's now change the admin to proxy admin so i'll copy the address of proxy admin paste it here and then call the function change admin. So now the admin of the proxy contract is the proxy admin contract. So I'll open the proxy admin contract and let's try getting the address of the admin and the implementation stored in the proxy contract. So I'll scroll up, copy the address of the proxy contract and then paste it here and then call get proxy admin. 
and it returns this address which is the proxy admin contract that you see over here. How about the address of the implementation? Again, I'll paste the address of the proxy and then call get proxy implementation. And that is the address that is returned. Starts with D91. And if I scroll up to counter B1, you can see here that the address that was returned belongs to counter B1. Okay, so the function get proxy admin and get proxy implementation is working. Next, let's execute some functions inside the counter B1 contract and then later we'll upgrade it. So I'll copy the address to the proxy, scroll up, select counter B1, and then we'll load counter B1 interface at the proxy address, and then scroll down. And then if I call count, count is zero. I'll call in a couple times and then get the count and it is equal to four. Next, we'll upgrade the proxy to counter B2. So I'll copy the address of counter B2, scroll all the way down to proxy admin contract, since this is now the admin of the proxy contract, and then paste the address of counter B2 inside here, and paste the address of the proxy inside here, and then call the function upgrade. Okay, the transaction is successful. Let's try calling some counter B2 functions on the proxy contract. So I'll copy the address of the proxy, and then make sure I've selected counter B2, and then load the proxy with the counter B2 interface. Scroll down, and let's get the count. Count is equal to five. And notice that now I have a function to decrement, so I'll call it a couple times. I called it twice. Let's get the count again. And the count is now equal to three. In this video, we completed the proxy admin contract and went through a full demo of deploying the proxy, proxy admin, and counter v1 and counter v2 contract.